Alright, hello guys, Swift here for Ruse, Tales from the Battlefield, how's it going? It's a very good day here in Ireland, it's a nice day, I'm in a good mood, and so I decided, you know what we'll do? We will spend our time talking to a computer screen, watching other people play a game. <laughs> um, yep, yeah, so that's what I'm doing right now, and I uh, hope you guys enjoy it. So let's get this going here. It's uh, Strongholds 1 vs. 1. Uh, Pomegranate in the red, USA. Deagle at the back in the blue. Uh, German player here. Uh, yeah, and and uh, so it, it should be a good game here. We've got two very very strong one versus one players here, who constantly win all those those tournaments, going around um, at the core of the Ruse competitive community. Uh, um, and this is a replay pulled from one of those tournaments from a long time ago now, but uh, so I hope I haven't commented it on before, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I haven't. Um, no, uh, Deagle, yeah, so no no, no air, it's Strongholds, the map is Strongholds, it's a very big, very long map for Ruse 1v1, and there's no air, which is uh, quite unusual as a start, because air is usually good in this map because there's so much space to control. Um, but instead, a German has gone for a uh, two depot barracks start, and uh, the Americans going for a three depot barracks start, and something else. What's going up here? What is going out? Recons, of course. Let's see, anti tank base. Okay, so interesting. That's going to nullify any German armor that might have come up. Maybe that was an armor base. <laughs> Who knows? Uh, might have been the third depot as well. He's built one here. They're deeper going out just to even out the economy because America did start with the three there. Um, so not much to report at this stage of the game. That uh, that anti-tank base is unusual. I wouldn't usually build an anti-tank base as America until I saw tanks myself. But um, well, this is what happened here. Probably a ranger's research going on there. What else could it be? Uh, there come the rangers. So it looks like there's going to be a little bit of early aggression from the American here. German still using light infantry, researching in the artillery anti-air base. Okay, so this light infantry is just going to come up here, probably not with the aim of ever doing much. You can see the uh, <laughs> large force moving to the left on the screen here, Sir, but um, it's just to it's just gonna sit there and jump out at an odd time <laughs> uh, in case pomegranate isn't watching and it can really cause some chaos sometimes that's that's um, I think that's what that's for it might be part of some master plan but that's that's what I usually do with little pieces of infantry like that also to occupy towns like it's always good to know you control a town um, okay so the rangers moving up they did destroy something there something worth five uh, grenade here that would be destroyed an infantry unit the machine guns on those SDKFZs should, if microed properly, keep those rangers back from the stugs without too much trouble. But the problem is these guys here on the left, uh, sorry I'm running this in slow motion by accident, <laughs> um, yeah, there's nothing to stop those quite in time and it looks like they're going to blow up that depot for the German, which is not a great start. Good start for the American, <laughs> uh, to be sure. And there it goes, but oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, it was splash damage from the Stug. Assault gun which took out that supply dump, meaning Pomegranate didn't get those points. So, um, you know, Deagle will probably be happy about that at least. Uh, he did lose the depot though, so he's going to have to... Oh, there it already goes. There's a new depot. Um, probably this one's a safer one. Third depot going up there. Uh, so it's going to be three versus three again soon. Because the uh, American didn't get those points now, um, that's you know slightly more even than it would be if he had destroyed that. Well, if he had got the points for destroying that too. But now, this infantry is really just sacrificial at this point. <laughs> it's not going to do anything. Uh, yeah, the grenadiers did jump out of the town today. One of them just got slaughtered here by, <laughs> by uh, infantry, and this one not going to get very far either. So priests out now, that's why he built the stugs in the first place I should mention, uh, probably. It's because he knew priests were going to come out eventually. 
and kill anything light on the field, so this flak idiot had better be careful. Um, which is why he didn't even bother with the unarmored artillery, he just went straight for Stug assault guns. Armor 3, they can take a few hits even from those wolverines. Quite a nice little unit you've got there. It's, yeah, it's a nice gun, basically. <laughs> so, decoy airfield uh, must have come down. Didn't see that, sorry. Must have come down before the camera went up. Yes, it did. Uh, you can see on the time on the ruses there. It's been up for a while. Um, which might have been the trigger for Pomegranate to build that anti air base at the start. Uh, who knows? <laughs> the priests probably would have come out anyway, so it was inevitable. Fourth Depot going up for America there. Trying to get the economic advantage. Yeah, so four Depots for America, three for Germany. And these recons just trying to sneak around the sides and into the base. <laughs> Looks like the Germans not going to let it happen though. Martyrs coming out of an anti tank base, which I didn't even see built. Sorry about this, guys. Um, so, a martyr, that's kind of a nice counter to Wolverines because they're, they're fairly identical. Uh, I think the gun is similar damage. It's, it's a better gun. <laughs> the Martyr has a better gun and more range. Um, and the same price, same speed as the Wolverine, so it counters the Wolverine quite well. Um, yeah, so it, it's a good choice, probably, when you can't get tanks, because tanks are more expensive. Uh, he's already got this anti-tank base. Probably, inevitably, we are going to see Jacksons come out, which are going to gonna nullify the Martyr advantage, but... Um, you know, <laughs> he says probably I'll deal with that problem when I get to it. Um, what's going on here? Fifth Depot. So, Eco Booming going on here, and that stands for Economical Booming uh, going on from the American. Here, five depots up at the moment. Uh, German still on three. Probably going to set up his fourth, this one or that one, soon. And he's probably going to set up that one. Oh, well, there goes something. Um, because he knows it's sort of clearer. <laughs> more easily defensible from the middle as well. Okay, so yeah, a little bit of skirmishing going on here, but nothing too dangerous. Those priests aren't doing much because everything is armoured. Uh, he's well prepared for those priests. Wolverines running around probably <laughs> don't really want to meet those martyrs. They do have 500 range on them. Well, there they go. One shot at Wolverines only armor one, so are the martyrs. Um, and down uh, all three, so. Deagle really pulling ahead. In the points game now, he's gonna have to watch out for these rangers coming through. He's only got one machine gun in there. Some artillery. Uh, going up. Sorry, that wasn't a depot, that was an airfield. Uh, from the German. So, German airfield going up, probably going to see American anti air coming out, that would be the decryption paying Unit off. There we go. So he knows he's got an airfield, he says, I'm going to build some M16s. Uh, you're not going to hit my priest with Sukas or whatever you're planning, <laughs> Deagle. Uh, doesn't seem that's what he's planning at all, though. He's going for a light bomber. Probably going to be two of those, obviously. It takes two to destroy anything. So he's probably looking for um, a surprise blitz bombing on a depot, something like that. Um, but the decryption has enabled the Americans to set up an AA net, so making that very difficult. And now the Americans come for an airfield himself. Um, probably one of the prompts for that was this grenadier wandering dangerously close to his supply depot there. He's not going to get to destroy it in time, fortunately for the American. But that, that's the sort of thing that just keeps you on your toes. You know, keep pushing those little infantry. Not too much now. You do lose points. You, it's worth five. But every now and again, it, it gets through and really causes some carnage. <laughs> uh, this can be some very funny moments. Flak 88 doing a very bad thing. It's dead. <laughs> uh, not entirely sure what it's trying to do there. But too late now, it's gone. Uh, the priests, looks like the priests routed it. was probably trying to keep moving to avoid the priests. Got routed in a very bad place, unfortunately. The rangers could come out and just pick it off. So he's revealed his bombers there, but there's a superior American fighter presence. It's gonna chase them right back to their airfield. 
before they get a chance to do anything. Um, now, because because the Wolverines are not going to do much against those Martyrs, and the Rangers are too slow, the Deagles decided, okay, I'm going to push, I'm going to take out this depot. I'm going to get even more points, and I'm going to even up the economy here. I'm pretty sure his train of thought was something like that. Uh, <laughs> could have been something completely different, who knows. Um, anyway, anti-tank bases were searching, so we're probably going to see Jacksons come out here, which are going to counter those martyrs nicely, so Deagle probably knows that, and he knows he's got to be fast. In and out there. No blitz, though. Doesn't want, you know, I mean, those dogs are already in range, aren't they, pretty much? Um, yeah, blitz would have been unnecessary there. So, uh, those Warhawks just sniped a little infantry there, just showing off. <laughs> uh, didn't get them back fast enough, and that's a major loss in the air there for for Pomegranate. Um, probably a bit unfortunate, he probably was going to snipe this or something. I mean, he, he that was probably a mistake. Uh, I would imagine he anticipated a you know, German fighter presence fairly soon. Um, maybe not that soon, <laughs> is what he was thinking. Uh, only one Jackson. Uh, uh, Martyrs do have 500 range, so, yep. <laughs> Jackson's gonna go down. But they won't last long, so he's decided time to go home. We did our job, we killed a depot. Let's get out of here. Um, American recon on the back of the base, that could be interesting. Looks like Deagle knows it's there. Oh, no, no, he already tried bombing it, didn't he? Um, so, not going to last too long, is it? Um, okay, anything else in the field now? So the fifth American Deep Down, he's on four, just about to be on three. One's almost drained there. Uh, Deagle still on three, just about to drain his closest one as well, but... Deagle on a significant point lead, 281 to 85, so just about 200 in front, um, which is important. So what the American probably wants to do now is take advantage of his economic advantage and uh, sit back and build uh, a big, a big ball with which to steamroll the American. The, sorry, the German. With good timing though, because um, the German is now going to build his economy up. So the American wants to hit him before he has the economy before the German economy is strong enough to stop him. There we go. I hope that makes sense. Um, but that's probably what's gonna... Probably what we want to see happening here. A bit of a cold war going on now. German decoys in the air, you can always tell, Stukas. Um, so yep, there's the air forces I was talking about, big, strong air forces going around everywhere. Only Warhawks from the... America there. It cost 20. I don't know. Uh, he's pretty confident in his A, I suppose. I might have gone for Mustangs. It's, um, might be a tough one for me. The thing is, yeah, Mustangs would beat would beat me 109s in the air, and they cost the same. There's a $50 research on them, you know. Though, so, yeah, it's a, it's a tough one. Uh, but I think I'm, I might have gone for Mustangs. Anyway, let's speed it up here. Not much happening. A bit of sniping going on, but nothing significant. Still on that 200 point gap <laughs> for the moment. Um, now there's another deep going up, so the American um, has drained one, two, three depots, and he's got two going. German has drained one, t one, <laughs> uh, and he's got two going as well. So definitely more money for the American. Not too much more, but more. Um, and uh, not much else happening at the moment, just some German anti-air setting up as well, just solidifying the lines here. Uh, the American is the one who has to attack, German just wants to kind of sit back and say, come at me bro, I've got more points than you, if you don't attack I win. <laughs> the beauty of timed games, and there's only 8 minutes left at this point, eight and a half minutes, so the American does have to make his move fairly soon. He's got these Jacksons, now he decided, yes, I'm going to attack. Under radio silence, there's a gap in American recon, that's... I didn't realize that. Um, 
So, underrated sounds bringing his units through the town, probably hoping just uh, to avoid any sneak surprise attacks from anti tank guns in the woods uh, with no recon. Is what he was doing there, or he just aborted some attack. Uh, we'll never know. But, for whatever reason, no. There's going to be an engagement. How many martyrs do we have here? One, two, three, four, five martyrs against five Jacksons. So if the American does his stuff properly, this Jackson should win. win the war there. Stugs, four stugs. Uh, that's interesting. The stug is in front of the martyrs? No, nope, not anymore. Okay, yeah, he's sad. Um, so what's he going to use the stugs for? Stugs don't seem to have a reason to be there yet. Anyway, <laughs> um, martyrs just need shielding. The Jacksons, not much they could do there. They were outgunned, out armored. So, uh, yep, uh, martyr two shots at Jackson, Jackson one shots at martyr. So, there you have it, probably unnecessary fanaticism, fanaticism there, I would say, but, uh, but who knows. Um, so, Pomegranate may be trying. Trying to pull back some of those points he lost. Uh, hasn't built any more depots. Neither has Deagle. Oh, yes, he has. He's built this one again. Under fire from priests. Probably was hoping to keep it uh, out of recon range, but looks like this. Well, you can, can see it. Could see it because it's gone now. So. Gap closing here, Pomegranate vs. Eagle, six minutes left. Jackson still advancing. Martyrs coming one by one, and uh, there was another layer of martyrs there, it looks like. And they have slowed down the Jacksons, but they're still coming. Oh, Jackson advancing. They do get one shot routed uh, without fanaticism by the martyrs, so. Ooh, okay, ouch. Um. <laughs> decoys coming up, so the Jacksons weren't focused firing, they were firing at the decoys, uh, the AI was doing that for them, and the martyr managed to, managed to, I think just route two, but he definitely he slowed them, he stopped them in their tracks there, the Jacksons, for a little while, bought himself some valuable time, while he, <laughs> um, while he defends his Economy here. Seems he lost that depot, but there was only nine left, so not too much of a disaster, except the pomegranate got more points. Um, yep, yeah, that gap definitely closer. Left. Now, this barracks here, um, you're probably aware that that's there because those units aren't coming out under radio sounds. You can see them popping out of nowhere there. Um, he wants to kill that because <laughs> that's going to cause him no end of pain coming into the back of his base and killing his supply depot here. Uh, didn't see that truck going up. Maybe we should have seen that. <laughs> I wonder if he thinks these are real. He's running from something. Uh, the recon is real. Okay. Jackson's probing, but not attacking. I don't see anything to stop him. This thing. Huh? Um, Deagle making good use of decoys. Fake offensives. <laughs> A lot of decoys. So, Pomegranate sees a lot of extra German units in the field, making Deagle look a lot stronger. That martyr isn't real, but he's running from them, so yeah, he does think at least some of these are real. Supply dump down, so, um, there we go, there's the draw. Three minutes, 45 seconds, and Deagle, okay, he took the lead again, so he's just about on a lead. Here, Pomegranate still needs to attack to gain the victory. Stugs making a very risky maneuver. Jacksons are quite fast and they fire while moving, so they should still be moving. There they go. They killed one, probably two, maybe three. Running through the city, breaking the breaking the site. No, they killed two. Okay then, two it is. That's um still a good amount of points. Aside from a mass straight from the M16s, one fighter down. Sixteen's down. How many fighters are gonna go down? 
Probably three. Mm. Okay, so maybe not the trade-off the eagle was hoping for there. Uh, nope. That was okay. Well, uh, that went in the eagle's favor. It looks like. Yeah. A lot of those warhawks are going down. Now. Quite a few there. So the eagle comes out looking stronger from that engagement on a major victory now. Two minutes thirty seconds left. Uh. And Pomegranate really wants to push into the base here. Um, he's got the money, but he hasn't got the units. And he hasn't got the money anymore, either. Priest's firing away at light units. He um, Two minutes left. needs to be within 10% there. So within 67 points. So it, there's still not that much in it. Uh, one minute, 30 seconds. He's... Got to push everything here, no matter what. He's gonna lose if he doesn't push. He's probably hoping to kill a lot of this light stuff. There, of course, the priests are they're good at scaring, but they're not very good at killing. <laughs> not particularly powerful. And the German air force is just gonna hold off any just one oncoming left. attack. So um, that's probably a win for Deagle at this point. So well, good game. A lot of back and forth. Uh, American, he had the money, but he didn't. Uh, you know. He, he just wasn't able to take advantage of it and see how much of an economic advantage he actually did have and the tab comes up but it looks like that's a major victory for Deagle so yep yeah, good game there uh, that was from a tournament don't remember who ended up winning that tournament uh, I think it was Deagle I think um, so yep yeah. good to see incomes there we go Almost 1,500 from Pomegranate, and 1,250, so only 250 more odd from Pomegranate. So that's actually, it's not too much, but it's enough to field, uh, say, say quite a few things, say 10 Jacksons. <laughs> uh, so yeah, okay, not, not as much as, as we were, as I thought I was looking at there. Okay, so I came down to a lot more army v army stuff, probably, and uh, no admins in the game whatsoever. Um, anything else to note? No? Really not. Okay, so that was probably a bit of a slower game, maybe a bit disappointing uh, compared to the last one. <laughs> um, but I think it was a very good game. It was um, two brilliant minds clashing on the battlefield there. Well played from both of them. Uh, commiserations to Pomegranate there. He did play well. And congratulations to Deagle. Good win. Uh, that's everything to say. Hope to see you again soon. Hope you enjoyed watching. Thank you. See you later. Swift for Ruse Tales from Battlefield. Signing off.